Welcome back. Ephrata High School's annual Toys for Teens fundraiser gets underway on December 2nd and runs through December 12th. The school's Associated Student Body Club pairs up with the Ephrata Food Bank to collect and purchase new toys for underprivileged children. The two-week fundraiser allows students, parents, and friends to contribute funds to purchase toys at the Ephrata Walmart during the week before Christmas. Students and volunteers then wrap the toys and bring them to the food bank, who then distribute them along with their holiday meal boxes. For more information, call the high school at 509-754-4993. A level one registered sex offender has moved to the 900 block of South Division Street in Moses Lake. Robert Woods, a 58-year-old man, was convicted of rape of a child in the second degree in 1989. He was released from prison in July of 1990 after serving eight months in jail. According to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, Woods is described as being non-compliant because he reportedly moves without notification. Woods is described as a Caucasian, standing five feet, eight inches tall, weighing about 240 pounds, and he has brown hair and hazel eyes. In Northwest News, police say 30 dead crows have been found in downtown Portland parks after reports they were having seizures. A police spokesman says there's no apparent reason for the deaths. The Audubon Society has been called in to help with the investigation. The birds were found Wednesday morning in three areas, Governor Tom McCall Waterfront Park along the Willamette River, the Chapman and Lonsdale Squares set among government buildings a few blocks west of the river and at the nearby Lovejoy Fountain. Firefighters reported finding no hazardous materials in the air and officers who checked the area said they found nothing that would have been fatal to the birds. A train derailed and tumbled down a steep embankment in California on Tuesday. Nobody was hurt, but the train cars spilled the corn they were carrying all over. Cars that were carrying corn grain are overturned on an embankment along the Feather River Canyon. A spokesman for Union Pacific Railroad says 11 cars went off the tracks after 3 o'clock this morning in the area of Rich Bar near the town of Belden. We do have a couple of trains held here close to this area, and then we're going to reroute trains. Uh, through the Donner Summit Corridor and our Interstate 5 corridor. While other freight trains wait, crews are cleaning up. They've put a boom in the Feather River to catch the corn. The Department of Fish and Wildlife says that's a relatively minor concern, considering that this is also a route for crude oil trains. That's a concern with the public. It's a concern with our agency that uh, with these trains that are carrying the crude oil, that something like this could happen. Today, a spokesman for the governor's Office of Emergency Services said this is the reason why state officials have so strongly opposed allowing oil to move on these tracks. Today, Union Pacific said it's still investigating the cause of the derailment. If this train can derail, how do we know an oil train wouldn't derail at the same location? Uh, we are constantly working at Union Pacific to uh, keep trains on the tracks and we have a robust track inspection process in place which really has helped us to minimize derailment. Crews are using vacuum trucks to suck corn out of the rail cars and then bulldozers and flatbed trucks to lift right, the rail cars in pieces and passers-by are stopping to watch it all. And it's just corn so fish get some food and uh, I said nobody's hurt. After spending two months with a bucket stuck on his head, the dog is now safe and has a new family. For CNN, reporter Jennifer Bauer has the story. It's okay, baby. This is home video of a family cutting a plastic jug off a puppy's head. The family first spotted this stray German Shepherd mix two months ago. The poor thing had been running around Audra Bohannon's property in northwest Harris County, but she couldn't catch him. Audra is certain the dog got into her barn one night and got his nose stuck in the jug because he was trying to get the food out of it. I mean, every night I went to bed thinking about that dog, and I really felt very bad about him being, having that on his head. Hungry, cold, and barely able to eat, Audra was worried about him. She would get on her four-wheeler and search for the dog every day. She tried to catch him with these nets, but it never worked. Eventually, near this bridge across from Audra's home, she and her family gained the puppy's trust 
and they were able to grab him. Got him up here, cleaned him up. He was flea infested, but other than that, um, he was just skittish. Oh. Hi! Hi, baby! They never gave up on the puppy, who's now named Bucky, short for Bucket. He's one lucky Bucky who will live permanently with Audra's family. The feeling that I had waking up on um, Sunday morning and, and not like looking out the window and not looking for that dog, you know, it was, it was a good, happy feeling. And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.